The Engadin region is attracting more and more art dealers. Museums and galleries are opening new spaces in the mountainous region. Polish billionaires Gracina Kulczyk just opened a new museum in Susch, while mega gallery Hausenwirt opened their ninth location in St. Moritz in December 2018. We believe that in the Engadin, in, in the Engadin you have to be in Samaritz uh, for us. And these places, these spaces became available. Uh, so the best location in the center of the Engadin, well, we couldn't say no. Uh, we've been looking, you know, casually looking for years. And we felt it wasn't really something we were interested in is sort of to get out of in the periphery. We felt it, the Engadin is a little bit the periphery compared to Zurich, so it had to be very easy for people to come. But the periphery of St. Moritz also has its advantages. Gallery Chudi, which was an hour away from Zurich, decided to move to Swartz in 2002. What do you have here that you didn't have in Glarus? We are much closer to the public, to our public, because uh, the Engadin is just very special. It attracts a lot of uh, people who are interested in quality, in uh, art and sports, and it's more an uh, urban public which uh, finds the way to the Engadin, and therefore this kind of public is much more open for what we are trying to do here. When you were in Glarus, you were close to Zurich geographically, but here you feel you're closer to people from Zurich. Exactly, yeah, that's really, really true. We had always been surprised in Glarus that people from Zurich have such big difficulties to visit us. Of course, we had also uh, quite a few who came, but after the opening, it was very difficult. Why, why was that? Perhaps it's, it was just not so chic to go to GLaDOS. But I have to say, for the people from Paris and Cologne, it was chic to be in GLaDOS because they didn't know. And what was also incredible or overwhelming for us is that, in a way, we did exactly make the same program as we did for almost 20 years in GLaDOS, but immediately we found a lot of visitors we couldn't imagine. It's been 16 years that you're here. It was, it seems, the right move to come to Swartz. Yes, that was definitely the right move. It helped also that we are still existing because I'm quite sure that if we wouldn't have made this move at that time, Gallery Judy wouldn't exist anymore. Sometimes it's very attractive to go in a small place where you're finding a gallery in a small, in an old farmhouse where you usually didn't expect a gallery like this. Even for very well-established galleries such as Haus and Wirt, the Engadin is attractive. You already have a gallery in Zurich, so, and you have galleries in New York and, and London and Hong Kong, LA, so it's not really needed. And that's, that's correct. We, we did it because we asked our artists and you know, the families that we worked with, in this case, Louis Bourgeois, and they just are fascinated by the idea to have an alpine gallery and, and um, we indeed, you know, we, do, we have nine galleries all over the world. We have uh, close to a million visitors throughout the year in these locations. So it's not the, the audience uh, that we're lacking or the people we don't meet, but you know, we can't help ourselves. We, we like beautiful spaces. Uh, we like to wide, still widen our audience. And indeed it was to be reconnecting with the places we call home, and it was felt very natural to do uh, to do something in the Engadin. For the CEO of Engadin St. Moritz Tourism, the attraction of the region is obvious. It's the combination of some um, facts that come together. It's one of one hand, it's the it's the nature, with its beautiful settings, the mountains and its special lights. And on the other hand, I think it's it's about our clients. You know. Galleries are looking for clients. Our ambition is to help and increase this season. Um, we want to add to the cultural discussion in this region. Um, I think you know, we, we, it gives an additional uh, 
uh, audience and public and press uh, coverage globally. Um, we hope that people, we to meet new clients, obviously, um, that are relative, maybe relatively new to the world of art, because if they're not, then they know us, they come and visit, which is wonderful too. You know, we can, I could also tell you that we do this to see our friends between Christmas and New Year, which is true too, because a lot of them have houses here and come here. In the beginning especially, we had been surprised who has an apartment or a house here. That's incredible. Also, only in Zuatz alone, in this small village of, I think, about 1,200 inhabitants, there are so many good people having an apartment or spending each uh, February or each summer. It's unbelievable because I think they also like the privacy here. It's a bit typical for Switzerland, but also here in the Engadin, they feel uh, free. How many come on a, let's say, top day? Uh, during Christmas and uh, New Year, perhaps between 30, 50 or even 100 people in the afternoon. Which is a lot for... Which is a lot for a gallery because galleries these days have the, the biggest problem for them is that the collectors are not coming, are not visiting the exhibitions in the gallery. They just or buy only, the artwork? Or... Yeah, they go to art fairs and uh, look it up in the internet but, or go in museums, but galleries have difficulties to attract visitors. And because we are in this beautiful valley with a lot of tourism and good tourism, uh, with a lot of culturally very interested people and with this beautiful house, it's uh, rather easy. And what we also like is they are coming back. In the beginning, it was also the people from Milano, from Torino, to the Zurich and so on. But then we realized, oh, there are one or two collectors from Munich and then whole Munichs seemed to come. Or then it was from Netherlands or from Geneva or Ticino. That's how we perceived it. I think it's a kind of a sophisticated client that uh, is coming to, to our valley and they, it's, it's not to, to choose between ski or art, you want to have both of it. It's the mixture where you can find only in this place. And the interesting fact is that this business, this market works the whole year round. It's not only in the winter season, it's not only in the summer season, it works all year round and sometimes it's even more uh, attractive to come here in September or in October where you have the beautiful Indian summer and combine it with going to the Segantini Museum, going to some small galleries and look for art. We, we hope that uh, we can help and extend the season. All these uh, tourist destinations in the Alps trying to, to, to have a program, ideas to extend the season. And uh, we have a lot of ideas how we can contribute to that. And this show, the Louis Bourgeois show, is a small museum quality show. This could be in any museum in the world. So, of course, it's about a window into, our, into the House of Worth world uh, and the world of Louis Bourgeois um, as well. This is a commercial show. A lot of these pieces are on loan, so they're not even for sale. So, indeed, our busiest period is during Art Basel and not over Christmas and New Year. Um, but it, you know, you start discussions here and that will then lead to something else elsewhere, possibly. This is Sush, a small village in the lower Engadin Valley with a little more than 200 inhabitants. In the past few months, Sush has been making headlines. Earlier this year, Polish billionaires Grzyna Kulczyk opened a new museum here, in a place where the post office and the bakery closed down in recent years. Now, this all might change, thanks to the 1,500 square meter space dedicated to art. I remember Obrista, I remember what Hans Ulrich Obrist said when visiting this place. And then, while being interviewed elsewhere, he said it is glocal. This is what he called the place. I think this is very accurate. On one hand, this place keeps to local tradition, but on the other hand, it has, and I hope it will, have a global reach. 
It ultimately does not matter where we place a well-governed cultural institution, whether it is a small place like Sush or another city. We know that big cities are filled with cultural institutions. We need to follow people who for many years have called for balance in the world not only in culture, but also in distributing of goods. We need to aim at distributing these activities evenly, spread out in big cities as well as in small regions. It's not a like a fact that art only can be happen or can only happen in the cities, in Miami, in Basel or in Zurich. Why? Nobody knows. Art is also possible and should be happen in the landscape, in a, in a valley like this one. Well, I guess in a valley like this one because you also have people from Zurich, from around the world coming right. here. So I would say Sankt Moritz is in the mountains countryside, but it's not at all, um, it's, it's a very urban right. clientele that you have. Yes, we have, St. Moritz always had this global approach, but sometimes it's, you do it probably in another way, if you can do it during the holiday, because on the holiday you have time. In the holidays you have your, the company around you, you have your wife, your friends with you, and you have just your relaxed atmosphere where you can join an art exhibition. Because people don't want the mass consumption of the art, as it is in big cities. People want to focus on art and also on being with nature. I think such places will have more and more proponents. What does this all mean from an economic point of view for you? You know, having these galleries, do you also see, you know, more hotel nights, beds being occupied, uh, more restaurants? Can you already tell that there is an increase? Or is it hopes that you're having? Well, we, as you said, we are, it's, it's at the moment we are talking about more the hope of the future, how it can be. Uh, we don't have any numbers about concrete, uh, about uh, overnights. We can, we can measure right now. What we see is that it's a lot of communication about that topic. So if like a, um, an event takes place like Nomad, uh, Nomad brings people, international press from all over the world. It brings new guests, that's sure. I was thinking maybe it's also a prestigious thing being in Sankt Moritz. Yes, that could be true. I mean, it's, it's probably as best uh, prestige as, as, you, as you find the, some of the most uh, well-known brands in the fashion industry here. You find Hermes, you find Louis Vuitton, you find Gucci, you find Prada. You can name it. If, they think, if you think about the te 10 most well-known brands, you will find probably about eight of them here. And so maybe we come to the art point that you find from the 10 most well-known galleries, institutions, you should find on the long-term side, eight of them here. What is Sankt Moritz or Engadin doing for those art institutions? Are you helping them to establish here? For instance, Hausen Wirt has a sculpture in front of the Waldhaus am Seehotel. We, we are helping them by the fact that you are open-minded for these projects. So we, we try to make it as easy for them as possible to establish it. And from our side, as a tourism organization, we, we help them by uh, public relations, we give them place in our communication channels, we show them in social media, on our website, all that, all that possibilities we have to communicate with our clients. As far as I know, from my personal experience, there's hardly any other place in the in the Alps or in the mountains where you can find something like this. With new art players coming to the Engadin, the region itself hopes to attract a wider and new audience. And this again will help the existing galleries too. Tanya König, CNN Money Switzerland, St. Moritz.